I'd like to call upon Erin's subconscious, please, and any collectives that need to support us today. We are here. Thank you so much. Would you like uh, to introduce who you are? This is just Erin's subconscious right now. Lovely. Well, nice to communicate with you again. If we were obsessed with labels, how could we label you? Uh, Arcturian, and I did mention in a previous public session that I am a male physical Arcturian. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how would we know if you were telling us fibs? How would you know if I was telling you the truth? Yeah, the f I said fibs, but that was... Oh, um, you, you wouldn't, I guess. Um, Erin has seen me. I showed her uh, myself in her third eye during meditation, but I'm not going to be doing that to everyone that listens. So they'll either take it or leave it. Thank you so much. Um, and how are you going, shall we say, today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm excited to talk to you again, Joe. Oh, well, fantastic. Great. Um, yes, uh, I am excited to talk to you as well um, because I respect the power of the subconscious and I know they always have the bigger perspective. And when I talk to Erin, I know she has the 3D human perspective of most things, just like I do. But this is why we enjoy talking to the subconscious because you are um, the higher dimensions um, that give us all the gossip. <laughs> yes, you two love the gossip. <laughs> wow, it's a hobby. Um, okay, well, thank you. So we're wanting to know about um, what people are calling the spiritual war. Is there a spiritual war on this planet? The people that are saying the term spiritual war are completely unaware of what is going on and who is allowing things to go on and who is orchestrating behind the scenes. If someone uses that term there in fear, they consider those, themselves to be a victim of a war. They don't actually trust that the higher dimensional beings are in control. It's uh, been made very clear that uh, government um, elected, and I'll use that term loosely, officials, um, they're certainly not in charge. Higher dimensional beings are in charge and it is not in our interest to tell you everything that is going on I would, however, like to highlight that anyone who uses the term spiritual war is in fear and believes themselves to be a victim of some sort. The people who do not um, resonate with that have faith in the higher dimensional beings that are most clearly in charge. That can be confusing because there are what you would call black hat or negative um, operational uh, plans that have been put into place or allowed to some degree and the full picture just isn't known. And the reason why behind it, why that has been allowed is it's hard to understand because that requires a higher perspective thought process to think, well, what's the true purpose behind that? It takes getting out of fear to get to that level of questioning. So I would like to reiterate once again, anyone who is considering themselves to be a uh, spiritualist, especially, or an influencer who uses the term spiritual war, 
is in fear. Thank you so much. So what about those who are saying that they're being psychically attacked? Well, Joe, as you know, um, Dolores Cannon has spoken about this, creating entities for different reasons, for their own life purpose. I am, I am not disregarding the fact that lower vibrational entities do exist and do leech on in one way or another, but they cannot they cannot level up to someone in a higher vibrational state. The reason why, as you and Aaron were just speaking, the reason why you two don't experience these attacks, nor are they even on your radar or a concern of yours, is because your vibration is so high and you are so trusting in your, uh, your subconscious and your higher self and that, you, it's just not even on your radar. You're not afraid of it because what's the point? You're you're you have moved beyond it. The people who are mentioning psychological attacks have not. Yeah, it just seems like it's the same kind of fear and worry and not trusting that they are protected profoundly. Yes, it, it's a uh, it's a worry of mine because they they believe themselves to be influencers. And they're not promoting the light at all. When they are going on and on about being a victim to attacks, they're, they're promoting fear. And again, this is a huge problem. Huge, so, huge problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so subconscious, in terms of those who are big influences that are promoting fear, obviously their subconscious and their teams are supporting them or guiding them through this can we then assume that they're a different collective from say us as Octarians or something else there are several things that could be going on they're either representing a uh, lower vibrational collective which again we, we don't judge that um, we understand their purpose and we don't judge them based on their uh, well, by vibrational status and them looking out for their own people. Uh, we do the same for ours. Uh, but there are also quite a few, Arcturian included, of people who are not listening to their guides at all. They're too afraid of the information or they're too based in fear themselves or they're so obsessed with getting recognition that they've never had before and tying themselves to a completely different movement from their actual sole purpose for being here, from what they were groomed to do to be here, from their life's purpose. So there are a few things going on right there, but I would like to uh, remind anyone that if something is not feeling right anymore, walk away. That includes people that you used to resonate with. If they are no longer uh, resonating with you or if they seem to have different priorities than you do, um, which is not empowering themselves or others, and, and your priority is empowering yourself and others, walk away. You can see it now at this point. Most everyone can see disempowerment and empowerment. Focus on that primarily, but even if something is empowering, if it's still not sitting with you, don't watch it. Walk on, walk on. It does seem that people need to learn some discernment from those poor influences that are victims to being successful or having dramas and problems in their personal lives. If you're getting that kind of information about them, um, then would that be a fair assessment to say you're kind of being emotionally played? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Being exploited in, in multiple ways, emotionally and financially, um, but also trying to get you off track. I mean, that is a big focus to get people off track and off purpose uh, in attempts to stop Gaia from ascending and 
from people from a set and just trying to avoid all of that happening is, is really um, still a focus of a lot of these influencers. And at this point, you really, everyone really needs to be uh, identifying that and then asking why. And, and then more importantly, is this person worth my very valuable time right now? Mm. The answer is probably no. Thank you. And so subconscious, would you say that people are uh, being more drawn to listening to their own collective's information at the moment? To a point, yes, we, we do push um, uh, push people to messages from our collective. That That is definitely true. We try to connect people from their own collective um, together in real life, just as you and uh, you and Aaron have connected. Um, there's that, but then also people are really tired of all these, of trying to figure out what's going on. At this point, a lot of people have committed to what feels right to them and whatever theory that is. And they're just sticking with it. And they're just sick of all, they're sick of the noise. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, thank you so much. Uh, we were wanting to know about Afghanistan and what is the purpose for uh, humanity's collectiveness to be aware of this event and this uh, friction once again? We are trying to wake people up to, uh, well, in general, and that is working. Um, again, we, we hate that we're at the fear factor point, but it's working. It, it is awaking um, people who have been hesitant to do so, or at least getting their attention. So that's, that is a priority of ours. Um, I know, I know Aaron really wants to know every single thing about it and I'm not going to be going into much detail um, besides what I've already said, but uh, everything, as we said, is unfolding as it, as it needs to. We are, uh, Aaron calls it Operation Wake Up. Uh, we are trying to, to get these people attention naturally. Um, for, for them to be curious and empowered enough to to form their own opinion about what's going on. And if something looks a little bit off about the photos that they're seeing, well, maybe they should look into that a little bit more. And maybe that'll get their curiosity going to start asking the bigger questions that they've been uh, socially trained not to do or too afraid to do. Thank you. Will there be disclosures and the truth about the real agenda that is happening there and has happened in the past there? Yes, yes, there will be. Will that be after the main shifts or for those people to learn on the old earth or will this occur before that? Before. Okay, and are you talking about Erin specifically or Aaron? General. Aaron specifically, there are so many, at, at this point, it, it's hard to say because people are going so many different times now, there will be so many different events. It, it's hard for me to give a concrete answer on, on everyone everywhere, because as you know, exit points are happening right now. Yes, sorry, and I do understand that um, uh, we're trying to uh, ascertain general information, which may not always be um, information that it applies to all, and that is the challenge here for us to to navigate through. Yes, yes, I, I understand your question, and um, it was a very valid one. But I also want to be transparent that I'm unable to give the the full answer to what everyone will be experiencing because there's just too many different. Um, exit points going on and strategies with that. So I, I can't give general answers, but I will do my best. 
I understand. Yeah, absolutely. We, we get it. Um, okay, and so is it up to people who have been holding back valid information that they can now share publicly that they realize that they're having these key parts of information that they need to now uh, express and share? Or um, I just keep wondering, there's so many individuals that have key component information about the real truth of different agendas. I know many are afraid and scared, but is that how this information is going to unfold or will it be seen in mainstream media? So both. There will be a public disclosure that people will not be able to avoid any longer. And we, we have all the information that we need for that. Uh, in fact, we have all the information we need for everything. Um, I, I, again, would like to reiterate that the people who are asleep have a very low tolerance for the dark um, the agendas that have been going on. So those are not going to be explained in detail. Um, some of them will be skipped completely because it's just too much for them to handle. And I would also like to make the point that um, the people I'm speaking with is a completely different audience than whoever is listening to this channel. This channel is well informed um, of the higher perspective of events that are going on and will continue to go on. They know about um, the dark agenda in many ways different to different varying degrees, but um, I would like to give a reminder to the people listening to this that those who are asleep cannot handle any more truth than what will be publicly um, given out and they need to have trust that the higher dimensional beings have been working very, very hard to get the appropriate information to the appropriate degree out for those people who um, are going to have their worlds turned upside down and we're trying very hard to be very understanding and have a well thought out plan for them. So, um, so no bulldozers like, like Aaron was, no, no bulldozers. It is not anyone's job to provide anyone any additional information unless they are asked specific questions. And even then, use your discernment about if you want to give the actual answer and if so, to what degree. Because people really just will need to be consoled and told everything is going to be all right. And um, God will probably be the most appropriate term for them to hear. Uh, God or, or source, wh whatever those people need to hear as the higher being in charge of it all has control. There is a plan. God has a plan. A source has a plan. And that's really what they need to hear. They don't need any truth bombs from, from anyone else. Tr just trust that, that the higher dimensional beings are working very, very hard on uh, getting this information out to the appropriate degree for those people. Thank you. That is a good reminder to not be responsible for this information. Um, it is a good reminder that you are not responsible for other people's growth and journeys. Um, be there um, as their loving, supportive friend or family member, but going and trying to awaken people um, will only be a waste of your time at this stage, it seems. Um, and then that really is coming from ego, isn't it? When people are trying to truth bomb each other with this thing. Yes, it, it is. And um, this is a popular mistake. And Erin doesn't mind sharing. It's already been shared. But she thought it was her responsibility to truth bomb everyone so that they, um, with, with information that's not in the mainstream, so they could then you know, check out what's going on for themselves instead of listening to, to whatever the news tells them. So they're not victims to the news. 
uh, and their agenda. She had good intentions in that way, but in actuality, that was her ego trying to save them. And it did more harm than good. And many people have made this mistake. And um, now a lot of people are understanding. And um, we just want to remind once again to uh, the role now for everyone that's listening to this channel is to be neutral and peaceful and be there for uh for their loved ones who have, have chosen a uh, different approach to this, which is keeping their head in the sand. And um, the, your, your role is now to console them and just tell them that God or source really is in, con, in control and everything will work out and things may look scary on the news or you know, in different areas, but like right here and right now, we're okay. We don't need to drown ourselves in worries of what could happen or, or what is happening to other people or what has happened to other people. Just focus on the now moment with the people that you love and consoling them. Thank you. Yes, very important to not buy into future worry and fear. Yes. Great. Thank you so much. Um, in terms of what we know as Jasara and Nasara, what would you like us to know about that? Because, you know, people are still trying to sell that information. I mean, is this now going to unfold as so many people have been promising? It, it gives people hope. And I know this has been mentioned in the last session. Um, it really does raise their vibration to believe that um, something positive is going to happen and that in itself is a good thing um, about whether or not that's going to happen. I, I am not getting a clear answer on that, but that doesn't truly matter really, as you know, but um, it gives people hope. They they feel that change is coming. And if they can go from being afraid of change, which is human nature, to then being excited about a change of, of uh, a different financial system, that raises their vibration. And that in itself is a great thing. Um, as far as who or when or what that will look like, um, I'm not getting a, a clear answer on that, or it is still being decided. Okay, thank you. Um, it seems what we have learned from other sessions is that preparing people for change in financial resets is giving them a preparation for, say, for example, what is going to be on the new earth, which is a there is no money. Uh, structure systems there so is that also part of it yes yes that was an excellent point yes um although that is too big of a pill for a lot of people to swallow i don't listen to this that are not able to um to listen to anything about new earth if that's too much for them uh it is it is a just a good way to keep them in, in high vibrational um, optimism for change, which in itself is, is quite a big leap for traditional uh, human response to change, which is always fear. So it, it's, it's a good thing for them. It is a good thing for um, the people that will be going to New York too, because it, it practice, yeah, it helps them open their mind to manifesting and you know what that could look like in the future and it's just all together it's, it's a good thing um it's, again i'm not getting a clear answer as as what that or when that will happen or what that will look like but we see it as a positive mm, i understand um and yes unfortunately it does seem too big of a conversation for many to I want to share and understand and grow from um, because it just sounds too crazy and ludicrous to 
to talk about the new earth being a separate uh, location from this current planet we're in it yes it it really is even in the spiritual immunity sorry unity community but um well, many people that listen to this channel feel that uh, getting buckets full of money is a ridiculous uh, resolution to everything that's going on right now. Uh, it, that doesn't, it doesn't make sense to them how that could solve any problems. Um, so it's about perspective. But the, the people who, who can't wrap their head around the idea that um, – guy is reincarnating that makes perfect sense to them so different crops different crops but either way either way it is it is a positive positive. and in terms of erin and her life is she comfortable with her life is she happy with her life or is she actually experiencing something else and wanting to have an escape and she is under the delusion that going to a new planet would be uh, solving all her problems. Uh, no, Erin's very happy with her life, but she has felt a very deep, um, what would the term be? She, she can't shake the thought or the intuition that something's really wrong here and I came I came to help this planet, but the darkness is is so deep that it would just be better for for Gaia especially to to re, to reincarnate and uh she has not been able to shake that and uh she's she's sticking to it. Many people feel very differently and that's fine. They can think whatever they want. But uh, no, it's not a delusion. She has no problems that she's trying to solve. She just has that intuition. That's how she found you. And it just, it just resonates with her. And we are well aware that this doesn't resonate with other people. And that's fine. I was having a conversation with Erin about permission slips and what that means uh, for people who understand that they're giving permission to have these experiences it really comes from a term from a channeler uh, who was channeling in Bashar. Um, subconscious, what can you tell us about permission slips, please? I, I, don't, under, I don't understand. I didn't hear what this Bashar person said I'm, I'm not clear what you mean by permission slip as it as far as it goes to spirituality uh, buying into a belief system so someone has given themselves a permission slip to experience uh, uh let's just go for the extreme to be murdered they've given someone they've given a permission slip they've been they accept um that experience so they have signed a permission slip um from from your perspective subconscious that is just would that just be a like an analogy for giving permission approval to um for life contracts and experiences well i'm setting different different meanings that people use this term for one of them permission slip using um what aaron called crutches such as uh crystals or um you know 5g protection let's throw that in there it, it's crutches that that they think are somehow helping them in some way when really it's just a crutch that they have all the power themselves and they're protected by higher dimensional beings. So, so part of that sounds like a crutch. There is part of life contract, life contracts, um, 
I wouldn't call permission slip because that sounds very informal. Life contracts are very well orchestrated and have a lot of meaning behind them. But the the thing that is really um, raising the alarm right now with me is permission slips could also mean disempowerment. And, oh, I gave myself a permission slip to victim. Uh, No, sounds like you've got some inner work to do if you think your fate um, victim is meant to be a survivor. That's that would be a life experience. But choosing to be a, uh, a victim of this, that that was what my mission slip was. That's just disempowering you from learning from the experiences and choosing to be a survivor and growing from it. So that's that's the uh, that's the version that's alarming me the most. Could, if we replace the word permission slip with, say, free will, would that work for um, this channel as information? Yeah, you can use free will to choose to be a victim and, and not to grow from it. You can use your free will to do that. Um, you can use free will to use um, crutches for your spiritual growth. If you believe that will help you, that's fine. Um, but ultimately, you have the power within yourself. If you set the intention and if you work on growing yourself, that's empowerment. But if you use your free will to, to not do that or or to use other things to to help you if you think it's necessary for your growth that is free will you can do that but it doesn't have any more power than you do you're giving it power if you choose to if you choose to rely on a crutch such as a crystal or a vitamin or whatever else did i answer your question because i i'm not familiar with this person Mm -hmm. okay yeah it is a I feel like it's an analogy that a channeler has expressed to people uh, to be able to make uh, people responsible for their own choices and decisions rather than being a victim to certain things. Um, That they have given given permission slips to experience certain life contracts, um, but also given themselves permission slips in terms of, well, I believe this crystal was going to give me uh, abundance. So I'm going to worship that crystal and do certain rituals for that crystal because that's going to give me abundance. And so they use these permissions. I I haven't heard the channel mansplain it to me. Uh, I just have seen some people um, using this as, trying to explain to me that any belief system is because you've given permission slips to believe in that belief. Um, I understand that the whole concept of new earth and the destruction of this planet, I don't think that many people would want to be giving permission slips to that because that just feels too big. Um, The reality is our belief systems, regardless of whether we believe in the new earth or not, it, um, if we don't believe it, is it still going to happen? Oh, yes. Yeah, Any anyone can choose to believe what they want to about this. Uh, if the information is too scary for them, that's their free will to choose not to believe in it, but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Gaia has free will. Gaia has chosen to reincarnate. So case closed. But these people who follow this belief of a permission slip do not want to give permission uh, to (laughs) They feel very comfortable and it's like controlling. They believe that they are, they Mm -hmm. get permission slips for everything. And so therefore, I almost my concern is that it almost limits people because if they don't want to believe something then it's not going to be in their reality and so it's like they go and live in a very very safe 
uh, path, which is great. I'm not judging, but it almost limits their experiences potentially, but maybe I've just got it wrong. Um, but thank you for um, that. Well, I would also like to add, um, uh, well, I don't mean to sound condescending, but it is cute to, uh, for a 3D human to believe that they're in charge of uh, what they will be experiencing on this planet and whether or not they get to affect the free will of others. No, that's not even close to true. There are high dimensional beings that are assisting Gaia at this time, assisting everyone at this time. She is, uh, sounds like this person has a um, conscious, conscious belief that she wants to experience this reality. But she has no, no clue what her actual life contract is that there are higher dimensional beings assisting her with this or what conversations she's having with them. So she's got this conscious belief, but she is completely missing anything outside of a 3D perspective. And a lot of people do fall in this trap, but I can't reiterate this enough. If, if someone chooses to believe that they have control of uh, others' experience, and the fact that Gaia has chosen to reincarnate, they are so mistaken and confused. Um, it sounds like they really need to connect in with their own team and surrender into the fact that they're not in charge. And whether or not they're on board doesn't mean that this isn't going to happen. It just means they're going to have a harder time with it. Yes, I feel like many people listen to spiritual information, own it as their own understanding, and then kind of get a little bit lost with uh, connecting all the dots and the perspectives of it. And so they sort of get stuck somewhere along the way. And, um, and, and that is their journey, and that is uh, very purposeful for them, but it does... Um, I mean, we see it all the time with people quoting Dolores Cannon and her work uh, through her career. And as we know, things evolve, things change, including our timelines. Um, and so while she was right in the information she was sharing, it is not right for right now. And we must not mm -hmm. get stuck in old fashion because that's horrific. <laughs> yes, yes, and much respect to her. And she's still available. She's been on this channel several times. For, she has um, gone over this several times to help people get over that hurdle that they have. Um, because uh, that was, as you know, the original plan was for 3D Earth and Gaia and everyone on it to evolve while still to the fifth dimension while still on this planet. But the plans changed and she is doing a lot of work from behind the veil. And um, it, it is a bummer that people um, are not able to expand their minds enough to know that she's still helping quite a bit and, and to seek out her messages for right now because well one it's relevant but two she's just so full of love and will just make everyone so happy hearing from her so I really would recommend people um, who are Dolores Cannon fans there are many to take a look at this channel the channel has had several sessions with her uh, She's very involved in this channel, personally, from behind the veil. So um, it is a shame that people are caught up on what was printed years and years and years ago. But the times have changed. And they're not, that cannot be any more obvious right now. 
looking around at the world, looking around at all the all the natural disasters that are happening, even if it's not in your backyard, even if it's not in your country, it's happening. Yes, such a good point. Um, and I guess I, mean, I shouldn't have used fashion. I was just trying to make a joke because fashion is, is truly obnoxious. But um, the whole um, we must keep growing and evolving ourselves, um, especially when there is great new information uh, that can be had to be able to apply it. But then it also feels like uh, what has been consistent with all of the sessions that I've been doing for two years is um, love is always the key. Um, the principles of how to move forward through life, the, the basic principles never change. And yet there are so many people that are trying to make these things super complicated and expensive and you know, really trying to block people from just hearing the basics um, of how we should be moving forward. Uh, yes, that's not an accident either, of course, as you know. There is always some drama. There's always a situation, a new, um, I want to say bad guy. Uh, someone. There's always someone to blame and to hate about a situation that was orchestrated most of the time anyway. But it, they're just trying to get people sucked into a fear cycle. And people that listen to this channel are well aware of this and have moved beyond it. Um, but that wasn't an accident. They don't want, they, the powers that were in charge, the media did not want people to choose a loving outlook on life uh, or explore the very basic message of love. Instead, they, they trapped people in an endless cycle of fear. That, that was very intentional. Yes, unfortunately, but then gives us more opportunities to see and apply how we would respond to certain things. Yes, yes. And, and by now, um, by now, you definitely are, are watching. Well, I don't know if you are, Joanne, but Aaron is is able to watch. Uh, well, the alternate alternative news, not the actual news um, of current events, and just watch from a neutral perspective and and um, have compassion for the people that are going through difficult times, but still keeping a high perspective of everything is purposeful, there are life contracts in play that we'll never understand being an outsider, but just just the, the love and admiration for her spiritual team helping and guiding and just the faith in them. So if people uh, were able to, to just do the same and, and just observe without getting t caught in um, to the storyline so that they're not in fear, and just hold compassion and space in their hearts for the people that are going to be very, very confused and upset um, when the truth gets revealed. Um, like that is the most important thing. It is that simple. It is that simple for light workers right now, actually. Yes. Well, it sounds simple from being a high dimensional being in your vantage point. Uh, <laughs> and it is really. Yeah, you. Well, you're able to do it. Aaron's able to do it. Lots of people are able to do it if, if they uh, make it a priority. There is a point where you just you can just look and, and laugh, really. Um, you know, but while holding space and compassion. So it, it's very attainable if it's a priority for someone to get out of fear and to empower themselves to, to make their own decision and to choose not to buy into the fear and the propaganda. It's, it's possible. You two have done it. Yes, we understand it as choices and we can choose to to completely fall apart if we want to. Um, but we've sort of realized that that is a density that doesn't really serve us um, as we are wanting to be more responsible uh, for ourselves 
and the impact that that does have on our friends and family um you know when we choose to be dense isn't really a big party fun for everyone so we understand and we've grown so much from that uh, so thank you so much mm -hmm. in terms of those sort of influences who are kind of suggesting there is a shift but it could be um 20 years down the track or you know five years down the track or whenever it wants to suit them um what would you like us to understand about the time framing that we sort of have do we have to focus on retirement what would you like us to know um the influ the influencers are giving time frames that are so far in the future and far-fetched uh, are blocked and cannot handle hearing that it's now or they're straight up lying about the date it's we there are no dates given as you know we don't give dates that's that's not going to be happening anytime anytime soon it's disappointing it's disappointing because what they don't realize is that it's also disempowering people that because people are resonating with the message because they're looking they're looking around and and sensing intuitively uh something's going on and and they're watching all the changes going on around the world uh that certainly is not going to be continuing for decades to come so that in itself is crazy. So it is such a shame that they, um, that they're not trying to disempower, but they're so afraid of, of change themselves. It's, it's, it's a bummer, but people, people aren't resonating with that. They resonate with the, all the way up to that message. And then they're like, oh, 20 years down the line. That doesn't, nope, that doesn't feel right to them. So they're just being passed over again. I mean, they're just falling into that uh, spiritual ego trap of being a stepping stone because they're not themselves growing. That could shock many people to hear that influences could lie. That could really profoundly quake someone who is believing wholeheartedly that someone is calling themselves spiritually gifted, super connected, super advanced, super whatever. Um, and that you're telling us that those people still have capability of lying. Oh, absolutely. That that should not be a shock. <laughs> all all collectives, all collectives are uh there are many collectives that have influencers some that are on their plan and some that are on there are many reptilian starseed influencers that are very popular and we don't see that as as negative because they're hurting our people our collective we would hope that people would know what resonates with them and what doesn't but you, at this point, it, it really should it should be improving quite a bit for the intuition. So people really should be moving on from things that don't feel right. Because if it's not, it's just trash being put in your mind. And it is toxic to put trash in your mind. You should be focused on empowering yourself. And if you're listening to someone who is actually disempowering you, it shouldn't feel right to you at this point. But you know so many people are trained to disbelieve themselves, distrust themselves, and still seek out for in outside influences. So um, often when people hear disinformation, they blame themselves for not being evolved enough or smart enough to, to buy into that information that they're hearing. It, it is a part of growth. So, so, so people really shouldn't stick on the blaming themselves um, or being upset that they didn't know better. It's an opportunity to grow and to learn. So even by acknowledging that you got tricked is in itself growth. So 
this it's it's going in the right direction. People just kept going and then chose to empower themselves and then to pay a closer attention to their intuition. It's a good thing. Okay. And so what's happening when people have suddenly uh, um, resorted back to their old behaviors and belief systems and gone back into fear, regressed? Um, what would you like us to know about those people? That is their free will. That is their choice. Um, or it's literally a part of their their uh, plan as a uh, star feed from a um, lower vibrational collective. Um, either way, people should be trusting their intuition and knowing that that doesn't feel right and that makes me feel yuck or like I feel disempowered by listening to it. Pay attention to how you personally feel while listening to it. If you don't feel like you're learning or if you don't feel um, positive or empowered, like if you are not feeling those feelings, then you just don't need to be listening to it. If that means unfollowing, um, well, I don't like to talk to influencers because that's, but I, I guess I'll use that term. Um, if if they're now unfollowing people they used to resonate with, good. It means there's growth. It means there's growth. Or you're recognizing someone else has gone down another direction and you're just not choosing that for yourself. Thank you. I've also observed people who were um, growing and expanding and then it seems like their life contract changed and they have... Uh, gone into fear um, in quite an intensive way. Would that also be an indication of that? My thought is people choosing to disempower themselves and go into fear was what caused their life contract to change, not the other way around, but it, it is very possible for people to um, to change, just uh, get tired, maybe um, choose to be so, it's all choices. If you, if you choose to be down, depressed that things haven't happened, according to your, your schedule, you are then once again limiting yourself to your 3D expectations without realizing the higher perspective and that it's not just you. There are tons of people that um, from varying backgrounds with varying degrees of knowledge of current events um, that everything is being taken into perspective or into consideration. So if someone then chooses to be so upset that they go into disappointment, fear, that's, that's their choice, but it is a choice. And it, it does mean that life contracts are up for changing. If you're not doing your job as the light worker to uh, help other people, well, that's what you came here to do. So no, there are no free passes to new earth just because you are a light worker. No, 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 you have a responsibility. If you're not living up to it, there are consequences to that. So then could we say they've chosen their permission slip to go into fear and stay into fear and that there is uh, ramifications for their actions and choices? Yes. Although I, I still don't like the term permission slip because it sounds very disempowering. If someone chooses to be, dis if someone chooses to be disempowered, that's their choice. And if, if they choose to be so disempowered that they can no longer help others, which is why they came here, why they volunteered to be here, if they chose to just throw that out the window, there are consequences to that. Absolutely. And um, I know some people will, would have heard you very well when you said you were not going to give any times out anytime soon uh, for say the date of the the shift um and then we i also want to remind you that we keep getting heard that the shift is going to be soon so can we just clarify um 
that the point of that statement from you is that, I mean, obviously I'm not going to be asking for a public date um, ever, <laughs> uh, but just <laughs> clarifying from your perspective, subconscious, um, that that's also what your position is. You don't want to say dates because people get obsessed beyond obsessed with that. Yes, it's, yeah, it is proving me detrimental. Um, this is a very complex, uh, I'll say game of chess, that's a popular term. It's very complicated. There are a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of things going on, most of which are well beyond the comprehension of humans on this planet, just well beyond. And no, dates will not be given. And if you are hearing dates from anyone else, walk the other direction, period. Okay, thank you, subconscious. And we understand that you, uh, you learn from us just as much as we learn from you. And so um, those people who have learned about the dates or who have learned about them shifting to new earth, it seems that they have been given up any effort or responsibility to keep on their high vibrational path. Um, and so we understand that um, when people hear that they're going to the new earth, then they assume it's a given and they um, almost self-sabotage their own responsibilities and vibration to um, just let things roll as they can. For those higher dimensional beings, those volunteers, those people who came to incarnate here at this very crucial time, who have chosen to be angry and upset and disempower themselves because it hasn't gone according to their 3D mindset of what's going on, which they know very little of what's actually going on. If they chose to to drown in that sorrow, to really just wallow in it and to be angry. Uh, I would like them to now think about everyone they love. Those are the people that will be suffering the consequences because those light workers who are in this nonstop pity party at this point, they're letting them down. They are here to help their loved ones and anything they come across to exemplify neutral, uh, inner peace, high vibrational love. So if someone is wallowing in that pity party, really, uh, Let's think about it again. Let's think about all your loved ones that you're not going to be able to help because you're not maintaining neutral. You're not going to be able to help them. That's why you're here. Everyone will know. Everyone will know. After this, after this 3D experience, who had contracts to do what? They'll they'll know that you were that you didn't live up to your contract to help them when they needed you the most. So if that's the legacy that these high dimensional light beings choose to pursue, that's their choice. There will be consequences. The fact that this isn't a light worker's primary concern is well, disappointing isn't even the right word. I don't, I don't, it's beyond disappointing. It's beyond disappointing that this conversation needs to continue to happen. But it does need to continue to happen. There are so many people that are going to be needing a, a person around them to tell them everything is going to be all right. That there, there's a there's a plan, God or source, 
is in control of this and to show them neutral to show them not to be bothered when things really start to get dramatic and messy they're going they're going to flock to the person that is not freaking out they're going to want to know what they know they're going to want to be consoled by someone who loves them with someone who understands exactly what they're feeling who acknowledges what they're feeling they want to be consoled but you can't do that if you're not maintaining neutral so i wanted to use this approach this time to remind those people of their responsibility to help their loved ones who are not at uh, the same advantage that they are who are depending on them thank you um great statement um as you know i'm constantly questioning where should we go with these sessions and what can we do since we do understand that they are pretty profound and have great connections to send healing and releasing to all um i do trust um that there are high dimensional beings supporting us um always and have always done so um and i would like to just say one thing i am worried for those influences who can't fully trust but also who are lying because i mean i know it's their choices but when you don't trust there's consequences and that there are higher dimensional beings looking down and that all of your followers will be aware at some point that you have blocked your information and you lied about your information I mean, that stuff blows my mind. So I would like an opportunity to ask you subconscious once again and the Arcturian Collective, what is still a big sticking point for humanity that I can um, explore in future sessions to be able to help? People are needing to stay focused on being that compassionate and neutral um, role model for the people they came here to help. Um, people are going through a lot of changes with their body, with uh, dreams, and um, our, our main goal is is helping them to prepare to, to be the person to step up and and be compassionate towards towards everyone that they know when things get more difficult for them so uh that's that's what we would like to focus to be on and i know this has gone this has been said over and over and over again but this is a repetitive uh repetitive <laughs> issue that that does need to be addressed over and over again um because there are new people hearing the information and they may or may not feel compelled to go back to the plethora of fantastic information that you've already done but um they will be when things get rockier speaking the higher perspective of what's going around around them and how to how to help others Okay, thank you. Yes, I know you've repeated um, yourselves a lot. Um, I always just keep wondering, what can I do to bridge that gap so people can start applying the information in the sessions? But I guess I can't do it for them just as like, just as much as you can't do it for them either. It must be their own choices to accept this information and apply this information. Yes, and yes, you, you do put that on yourself. Um, it's it's not, uh, you're, you're more than doing your job. It is up to other people to uh, listen and apply the information. Um, another idea would be possibly different, different angles or different examples of what it means to, um, to face on a trauma 
um, maybe personal experiences from the people that that do talk on this channel um, of things that they had to overcome and what how they were able to uh, embrace the challenge, figure out what they learned from it, and then release it, and what that process looked like for them, and then how they felt afterwards. I mean, it really might need to be broken down um, because some people do learn from hearing examples. Um, but that might be helpful. It, it is quite repetitive. It, it, you don't mind. Um, but even the, the conscious conversation you had today earlier was just so wonderful, offering different perspectives. And um, there, there's a lot of, that people can learn from the examples and, and hearing different examples from different people and, and then applying that to their life. And we don't, we don't mind we don't mind that or um, or being repetitive in any way we can help with that message because it is the most important thing right now. And there are a lot of people going through things they don't understand with their body, with their dreams, um, with their emotions, and just uh, really focusing on that. Um, you know, maybe through more conscious conversations could be helpful for other people. The one today was just so wonderful. Very, very, very wonderful and uh, a great perspective on a very complex and sensitive topic. You did a wonderful job. Well, I felt sorry for Karen because she had no clue what I was going to drop on her as I needed to try and <laughs> navigate through uh, my own experience to be able to kind of feel that neutral, but also respect all the emotions for all of it. It was such a... Uh, such a, I, I, I do worry for those people who are going to be triggered by it. Uh, I love them so much and I don't want anyone to, to be hurt from any of the content from this information. But also on the other hand, I understand that triggers are great opportunities for growth. And I just want everyone to heal as fast as they possibly can at this stage. Yes. And uh, it, that, that will, that, that conversation will help a lot of people. Um, you handled it very, very well. So, um, and more, maybe more of those types of conversations. Um, I, I think it was very touching. I think other people will feel um, that, that it will resonate with them for one way or another, and it gives them different perspectives they hadn't considered uh, previously. So, it that was wonderful. Thank you, subconscious. One thing I am concerned that people who have been raped will hear that conversation and jump to a conclusion that potentially they were the rapist in another lifetime. I don't want everyone to assume that. Um, and I, I know it's such a, such a hard vast, uh, such a topic that is so sensitive from your perspective, subconscious, what could be, the experiences for people to be raped um, for them to learn and grow from. Um, and can you also confirm that not everyone who has been raped was a rapist in another lifetime? Yes, I will definitely confirm that not everyone who was raped was a rapist in another lifetime. Um, so no, that is not a blanket statement, and it did not come across as a blanket statement either. Um, but with the high frequency energy that is coming into the planet, it is causing every every buried um, trauma or emotion to bubble up to the surface to then be processed. This also includes this very sensitive subject of rape. Um, and it is, there are pain on both sides, but both sides, um, especially those who were raped, tend to bury the emotion and um, that is a coping mechanism. They are not wrong for doing so. They were truly victims, but now is the time where everything is being brought up to the surface. So now is the time to, it, to bring up those buried emotions, to, to think about it from a higher perspective of it, 
even though that was such a horrible experience, look how much I've grown. Look how much I have chosen to um, see myself as a survivor instead of a victim or while this is being brought up now is the, now would be a great time to to change the outlook of yourself to a survivor and to own it as um conquering something so 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 difficult and allowing that situation to make you str- to make you stronger and then releasing releasing those buried emotions that might mean some ugly cries, <laughs> but anything that, that lets the trauma and the emotions out so it can finally be out, so it can finally not be held onto any longer. There's a lot of purging of these buried emotions and the trauma from rape is, is also a buried emotion that is um, being bubbled up to the surface to the surface and it's a great time now to get a lot of help from your team ask your team if they can assist you with releasing these emotions 